Hey everybody, what's up? Yeah, I'm on my lunch. I went to lunch at about uh, about 16 minutes ago. Uh, I would have been probably doing the 16 minutes earlier, except uh, we had a customer, an old lady, uh, that uses one of our motor carts uh, to shop and get around in the store. And she kind of complained about uh, a dog barking in a car. And, you know, I, I can understand if the windows are up on a car and a dog is barking and it's a warm day like this. I mean, it's like, what, 74 now, 71? It's projected to be 81 degrees. You know, I can understand maybe it's a concern, but I've seen this car before. I've seen the windows down on the car. I've seen the dog in the car before, and I've seen the windows down. So, and we got a breeze right now, so the dog's okay. I mean, yes, yeah, yes, it pants, but it's barking a lot. It's panting because it's barking at a lot of the people walking by. But yeah, it's got plenty of air going through. It's just laying down, waiting for its owner. So there's nothing really concerned concerning. I mean, if the windows were up, yes, it would be concerning. But you know, I but you know, right now it's okay. It's got like a, it's got all four windows, you know, decently cracked for it to have air flowing through back and forth. So it's okay. But again, like I said, I can understand the concern where the older lady's coming from. So, we'll just see what happens. I think she's even going to try to contact the police and tell them to say, yeah, you know, this is what I saw. And then they'll probably come to us and ask, well, is this true? What's and we'll probably have to tell them, yeah, partially, but the th yeah, partially, but the thing is the windows were all cracked enough to where air was flowing back and forth. It had air. So, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. I, the, dog's been, the dog's okay. I mean, people are not that cruel, really. Really, from what I've seen around these areas, especially the older folks, the handicapped and all that, they're not that cruel. In fact, people bring their animals in the store sometimes uh, just to make sure they're not stuck in a car, even if it's not that hot or anything, so. But anyway, that's, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. What I'm here to talk to you about is something that everybody has been talking about in the wrestling world, if not the sports entertainment world, and in, the, and, it, and in the world of entertainment period, if not in the world of social media. And what that is, is Rebby Sky. Rebby Sky Hardy, or Rebby Hardy as she's known on Twitter. Matt Hardy's wife. And, oh boy, all I can say is, you know, we've seen Rebby go off on people sometimes about the way she gets treated, the way her husband gets treated, maybe her brother gets, brother-in-law gets treated. And sometimes we'll just see a few treats and that's it. And sometimes those tweets will, um, those tweets will uh, get deleted and removed because it was just her venting and all that, but <laughs> not this time because I went on her Twitter and I already seen people reporting what she had already tweeted out several times already. I mean, over the past couple of days. And I went to go see them for myself. I went to go see those tweets that people were reporting myself on her Twitter page. And then as I did that, I saw more of the tweets that got reported later on. I saw more. I was thinking, wait a minute. These are not the ones they reported. These are new. So yeah, I saw some new ones. And let's just say, um, Impact Wrestling, formerly TNA. By God. My God. What have you guys gotten yourselves into? You know, a lot of people can argue back and forth over who owns the intellectual, into, who owns the rights, who owns the intellectual, intellectual, easy for me to say, the intellectual property of the broken universe, of the broken Matt Hardy character, or the broken gimmick. People can argue back and forth who owns the initial rights, who owns the intellectual, intellectual, that's what it is, intellectual property, that's the word I was looking for, 
who owns it, who has the rights to it, who has the rights to use it whenever they want. You know, people can go back and forth as to who owns the rights. And I, for one, have to decide with the Hardys. I have to decide with Rebby Sky here. The Hardys, as far as I know, as far as we've been following, the Hardys, from all the behind-the-scenes sources and everything, this is from all the behind-the-scenes sources within TNA, within the wrestling business, and all that. You know, within the... Like I say, within the wrestling business and all that. Um, I, like I said, I have to... You know, I have to uh, agree, like I said, with the Hardys and Revy Sky. Because like I was trying to say before I was distracted there for a moment. Um, what I'm trying to say is... When you take a look at all the behind-the-scenes sources within TNA and all the other reports and sources that have come out uh, throughout the past year or so since this whole broken gimmick began um, not once was it ever reported or acknowledged that TNA owned the rights to the broken gimmick I mean when you take a look at everything they did if TNA honestly owned the rights to the broken gimmick, do you think honestly they would have allowed filming of some of the vignettes or some of the vignettes or some of the, you know, story arcs and all that, like Final Deletion, Delete or Decay, you know, Total Nonstop Deletion and all that. If TNA owned any of the rights to that, any of the rights. Do you think they would have allowed them to film at the Hardy compound, at the Hardy's property, on the Hardy's property? Do you think they would have allowed that to happen? No. They would have said, we own the rights, you're going to film in this location, close to Universal Studios, so that we don't have to travel for it. They would have done that. But they didn't. They didn't do that. Do you know why? Because pretty much they realized they didn't own the broken character. They didn't, they didn't own the broken universe. They didn't own the broken gimmick. They didn't own the Bertha Nero gimmick. They didn't own any of that. And yet, you have Impact Wrestling and its new owners, Impact Wrestling, former T, formerly TNA, and its new owners coming out and saying, hey, we own the properties. We own the intellectual, uh, uh, intellectual, uh, easy, again, easy for me to say, uh, easy for me to say, the, um, the inter intellectual, intellectual property, uh, intellectual property, you know, they, they're now coming out saying they own it. They're now saying, hey, we own the rights to the gimmick. We own the rights to the universe. Since when? Since when have you owned the intellectual, the intellectual, intellectual rights to, to something that obviously has been used outside of your promotion? When have you owned the rights? Never. And I think what's going on here is the reason Impact Wrestling wants the rights is they want to give that broken gimmick to somebody else. That's what I think they want to do. I think they want to use, they want the, they want the rights, they want the copyright, they want everything of the broken uh, universe and everything, the broken character, the broken gimmick, you name it. They want it so they can pass it on to somebody else. They can pass the intellectual rights to somebody else, or at least have the intellectual rights to pass, so they can pass the gimmick on to somebody else. I think that's why they want it. And the person I think they want to try to pass it on to, just the way they're portraying him right now on the programming, is Cody Rhodes. I mean, think about it. Cody Rhodes is suddenly having this, like, split personality, this 
change in attitude and all that. It's like, what's going on? Why is he acting so weird? And it's like, and it's almost like Impact is trying to do something with Cody that would be reason enough for them to give him a gimmick like the broken gimmick. And again, this is just my, now this is just my opinion, but if this is the case, if Impact Wrestling wants the intellectual intellectual rights, the intellectual the intellectual rights, easy, again easy for me to say, of the broken gimmick universe, all the kitten caboodle. And in my opinion, they want it because they probably want to pass it on to one of those stars, mostly like let's say a Cody Rhodes. I don't think Cody would go for it. I think if anything, Cody would be more like, hey, I want to get away from that kind of stuff. This is my, the way I'm acting is just part of my character, part of my American Nightmare gimmick. I don't want to add in a broken gimmick. But again, that's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. And, and again, you can't blame Rebby for getting upset because of the fact that everything she said, Ed, I think, I believe is the flat out truth. I mean, no one would go on a long, excuse my language, God, no one would go on a long-ass Twitter rant day after day after day attacking the former employer or the family's former employer or if there wasn't a reason for it, if there wasn't truth to it. And the truth being, in my opinion, opinion is that Impact Wrestling it's right now full of crap. I mean, yeah, they're trying to do some positive stuff to rebuild themselves and, you know, you know, rebuild themselves, reprove themselves and all that, just like they, the slogan saying. But in a sense, you know, that, and in a way that's all great, but when one thinks about it, how great is it if you're trying to steal something that's not really yours? Again, like I said, if they owned any rights to the character, if they owned any rights, in a, any, any, any kind of copyright, any kind of intellectual, intellectual right to any part of that, they would have not allowed the Hardys to film the final deletion, delete or decay, Total nonstop deletion, apocalypto, they wouldn't have allowed them to do that at the house, on, on the property. No, they would have chose somewhere else. They wouldn't have allowed them to film portions of the great war match at Boundful Glory against Decay, A, the night before, if they owned the rights. They would have came up with something different, but they didn't. The truth is, again, my opinion, and Rebby, if you're watching this, my opinion is I think I think they're trying to get the gimmick, trying to get the rights to the gimmick because they want to pass it on to somebody else. They want to give it to somebody that can roll with it, that can embrace it, and probably do more with it than Matt Hardy, in their minds, probably ever would have done. And you know what? It's not going to work. Because now you have Matt Hardy trade, going and trademarking the broken gimmick so that if he goes to WWE and uses it, they can't have any right to it. It's like, what are you trying to do? And then on top of that, they, they uh, send a 15-page cease and desist order to them. And yet, at Ring of Honor's 15th anniversary pay-per-view, yes, ROH refers to them as the Hardys. They refer to them as Matt and Jeff. But you can clearly tell that with the exception maybe of Jeff just a bit, just a little bit, not all the way. If you look at the backstage uh, uh, interview, the backstage after match interview with the Hardys, you could tell that Jeff is still, into the brother, still, bro, still being Brother Nero. And Matt's still broken Matt. And again, it's the same on camera. Yeah, you can refer to them as Matt and Jeff, but when you look at Matt, is that really just Matt Hardy? No, that's the broken Matt character. 
at the 15th anniversary. And they just, and it's like TNA just doesn't get it. They, they don't understand. They, they don't own the rights to, to something they never have owned the rights to. They don't own the rights to the broken character. They don't own the rights to the broken universe. They don't own anything. I mean, heck, they're even going after Senor Benjamin, uh, Rebbe's real-life father. Why would you go after this guy when she has pretty much called out called them out and said, hey, look, he's never on the contract. He did this because he wanted to. He did this because he loves his family. He never, never was paid a dime to do it. He did it out of the goodness of his heart. But yet, you have Impact Wrestling, you have Impact Wrestling going after him because he's part, his character is part of the universe. It's like, you know, it's like, why? What's the point of going after the Hardys was something that pretty much anybody could come up with, okay? You have a bunch of men and women there that could come up with a similar character or a similar gimmick and it would show you, and that would show that you don't have to go after one that you don't have the rights to. And now, and here's, here's the thing. Now they're saying that they want a percentage of the broken gimmick if the Hardys use it in WWE. They want WWE to say, okay, we'll give you a percentage of the broken gimmick merchandise. Now they think it's sold in the house show events that they're in, da da da. You think honestly WWE... Do you think honestly... Do you think WWE honestly is going to want to do that? No. No, because WWE's, they have top-notch lawyers. They're going to look down everything if they sign the Hardys. They're going to see that Matt owns the broken gimmick. They're going to say, okay, you want to bring that in, that's fine. They'll probably strike a deal to where they get a percentage instead of TNA, and Matt gets a percentage. Basically a fair amount, hopefully. And that's all that's going to happen. Again, I don't, I don't think TNA realizes what they're doing, or Impact Wrestling realizes what they're doing, because you're basically saying, because according to the cease and desist order, they don't want them to use the characters, they don't want them to use the broken gimmick, the Hardys, outside of WWE, I mean outside of Impact Wrestling, they don't want them to use it at all and then you have them coming out and saying oh well we don't want them to use it necessarily but we will let them use it if we get a percentage of the profits so in other words you got CWF Mid-Atlantic where they won the Mid-Atlantic tag team titles where they were scripted in because this is all part of a storyline they were scripted in and they won the CWF Mid-Atlantic Championship they go to the Crash promotion, which is run by Conan, and win the Crash tag team titles. They go to a independent show, oh, and win their Northern tag, and they win that promotion's Northern tag team titles. And then to cap it all off, they go to Ring of Honor, and they win the Ring of Honor tag team titles. And it's like, it's like, you know, does Impact Wrestling not get it? What was started in their promotion by the Hardys is a hot commodity. It's something that's never been done in wrestling. You have, a, formerly you have a team from one promotion going all over the place, declaring and visually showing, I mean declaring and visually showing and following through on their promise and quest to win all tag team titles known to man. And yet you want to, excuse my language, God, you want to shit on that storyline because you want the intellectual properties, you want the rights to the gimmick and the characters when, when even, even Rebby and Matt and Jeff have pointed out that the broken Matt Hardy character, like I said, is his idea, is his creation Mostly because he has the Matt Hardy name in it. 
And again, the only thing I can think of as to why they're doing this is because they want to use the broken gimmick to give to somebody else. And in my opinion, it looks like they want to give it to Cody or, or maybe jo or maybe someone like Cody Rhodes, perhaps a Josh Matthews, or you know who, and or perhaps Maria Canellis and Mike Bennett if they resign them down the line. Fine, but really, you expect them to do better, do a better job than Matt and Jeff and Rebby have done? It's like you got to be delusional. You have to be really delusional to think that. But when one thinks about it, I don't think TNA realizes, not in TNA, but Impact Wrestling, formerly TNA. I don't think they realize what they're doing. I think they're desperate. I mean, here's a few things that they're doing. They cut cost on their taping. So instead of being taped for, tw so instead of being paid for 12 shows that get aired on television, you're only getting paid for the four days that those episodes are being filmed. Okay, cost-saving measure. I get that. But if you're trying to co do cost-saving measures, then why in the world? Are you going after the Hardys when that's going to cost you millions among millions and pretty much kill any momentum you have of getting this company back off the ground? Why? Because they want the... Why? It's real simple. They want the hottest gimmick, the hottest intellectual, intellectual, intellectual property, the hottest storyline going in wrestling today on their program. They want it, but they don't want the Hardys. You can't have your cake and eat it too, you know. There is no way anybody else, Cody Rhodes, Josh Matthews, Maria Canellis, Mike Bennett, Kevin Matthews, Sienna, Lauren Vandress, it doesn't matter. You know, EC3, doesn't matter who you try to give it to, it's never going to be the same as with the Hardys. And Impact Wrestling needs to realize that. So if I'm Impact Wrestling, I drop this. If I'm Impact Wrestling, I drop this lawsuit, I drop this cease and desist order, and let things be. Just focus on trying to rebuild your company, and don't try destroying it before you rebuild it. Because financially, that's what's going to happen. You are going to end up in court. The judges are going to see law that, by law, the Hardys, Matt Hardy and his wife, Ife and all of them own the rights to the broken gimmicks and you, brother, the broken gimmick, the brother Nero gimmick, and all that. They're going to see that they own complete rights. Rights and property. They have complete ownership. And it's going to make Impact Wrestling look like a fool. It's going to make Anthem look like a fool. It's going to make Anthem Wrestling Entertainment, AWE, look like a fool. It's going to cost them millions of dollars, and like I said, it's going to cost them in the long run. It's going to hurt the company more so than it's going to help it. And it'd be better off that if you want a gimmick like the broken gimmick to have on your show, that you basically get your own version. You create something similar that people can identify and say, oh yeah, that's like that broken gimmick, but it's different. Instead of going after something that you don't own the rights to. And you know what this really is when you think about it? It's Impact Wrestling, it's Anthem Wrestling Entertainment, Anthem Sports wanting to get as much money as they can because of one reason. They don't have the money right now to go on the freaking summer tour that they plan to do for Impact Wrestling and they need the extra cash and they pretty much figure, hey, if we can get it by suing the Hardys or get it by trying to strike some deal with the WWE, Ring of Honor, or any other wrestling promotion out there that uses the broken gimmick so we get a percentage of it, then that's how we're going to do it. Seriously? Anthem Sports, you, you own Fight Network. You seriously need that extra cash for Impact Wrestling? Seriously? Are you that tight? If you're that tight on cash, then why the heck would you even purchase Impact Wrestling? The, the truth is, the, the, the thing is, when you get down to it, in Anthem Sport, Anthem Sports, Anthem Wrestling Entertainment, Impact Wrestling, 
they don't have no real leeway here they have no argument whatsoever it's going to blow up in the and in the end it's going to blow up in the face the judge the courts they're going to side with the hardies and impact wrestling is going to look like complete jackasses for this they're going to look like complete greedy jackasses and those that they have signed now for maybe a year a year-long contract two-year contract whatever they're going to see that writing on the wall and they're going to be like well if these guys can they'll be like well wait a minute if this if these owners are greedy for money you know that they're desperate for money that they're willing to sue for something they didn't own do we really want to be part of them you know that that is what that is what i think is going to happen alberto el patron alberto el patron el patron Alberto El Protron, Mount Mor Matt Morgan, Chris Adonis, Chris Masters, if you will. You know, all these guys, EC3, all of them that are on the roster right now, they're going to see what's going on. Kevin Matthews, Congo Kong, they're all going to see what's going on. They're going to be like, do we really want to be part of this company run by these people, run by these new owners that obviously are greedy for money and are willing to sue for just about anything because they're desperate for money because they don't have the money to do the tours like they promised or are they just greedy in general or they just want the rights to everything because think about it you think WWE is bad right I mean yes WWE if they want to own the rights to something they make a, they make somebody change their name around like you know with Brian Danielson Daniel Bryan you know they made him change from Brian Danielson to Daniel Bryan Okay, fine. Why? Because they wanted to own the rights to the Daniel Bryan name. Okay? They want to own the rights. They want to get some money off the merchandise. Da, da, da. Okay, I get that. And yeah, WWE has been known to do that, but they do it. But the way WWE does it, whether we agree with it or not, is a smart way of doing it. You know, they, they don't come out and say, oh, well, we own the rights to this, we own the rights to that. No. They don't sue somebody over their name, the real, over a gimmick where they use a real life name in it. No. They say, well, we can let you come in like this, but we also, but we want to own rights. We want to own some copyright of your character. So why don't we change your name around to this, make it similar. People know it's you, but we own the rights to said name. Again, going back to Daniel Bryan. You know, they could have said, oh, we'll bring him into Bryan Danielson. People will like him. Did they do that? No, not really. I mean, yeah, during the early, during the premiere, during the premiere year, premiere season of the original NXT, yeah, he was referred to as Brian Danielson, as formerly Brian Danielson, and even in interviews, he, when he got eliminated, I think it was like one of the second, the first or second eliminated, he said, yeah, my, you know, who knows what the future holds for the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, you know, so. You know, so for them to want him to change it to Daniel Bryan is because they want to own the rights to the name. They don't want to own the rights to Bryan Danielson because they know they get in trouble. They want to own the rights to Daniel Bryan. That's what they want. And WWE, would you like it or not, they're doing the smart thing. They'll let people, you know, they'll let, if they want the rights to something, they let people change, they have people change their names. Like with Tyler Black. They could have said, okay, we'll let you come in as Tyler Black. If they try to copyright that, what's he going to go by? Huh? What now? Is he going to change it to TB and that's it? No. Or Shane Black or something? Maybe. No. What do they do? They say, Tyler Black, let's change you to Seth Rollins so we can own, own the rights. And that's what they did. John Moxley, Dean Ambrose right now. Do you think... Do you think they could have said, oh, well, we want you to come in as John Moxley and we'll own the, the rights to the Moxley name? No. They know fans know who Dean Ambrose originally was. So they say, okay, Dean. Okay, John, we'll change it to Dean Ambrose. That way they own rights to the Dean Ambrose name. The point is... The, the point is WWE... He does it 
more intelligently. They do it the right way. What else was I saying? You know, WWE, they do it the smart way. They do it the right way. They don't try to say, you know, they don't try to say, oh, well, we want the rights to something. And that ambulance right there could <laughs> symbolize what will happen to Impact Wrestling if they keep something like this up. But still, they don't come out and say they want the rights to something unless they own the rights. And that's why they have people change their names, maybe change the looks. Because they want the rights to that name. That's what they do. You know? And... Or they make some kind of business deal. Like, I'm sure Paul Levesque, Triple H, has, has made sure in recent years they got, that guys like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and Bobby Roode, they, they keep the real life, they keep the real names, or the names they're known for, but they make a deal to where they get part of the profits and WWE gets part of the profits. Like, you know, WWE gets a part of the pot, gets a pot, gets a taste of the pot, so does, let's say, AJ Styles, and AJ still keeps the rights to his name. But maybe there's agreement that if AJ leaves, they can still use his likeness, and he gets a percentage, a fair percentage. The, the, the point is, what Impact Wrestling is doing is digging their own grave before the resurrection is complete. See, they're trying to resurrect themselves you know, to be that alternative they once was. To be what the fans used to be proud of. The fans used to come and watch. And yet, they are digging a grave way before the resurrection begins. They are a phoenix that's wings are slowly being extinguished before it takes total flight. They are hurting themselves in doing this, and they don't realize it. And it's because they're desperate for extra money to get their tour going, and they want the hottest storyline gimmick, storyline and hottest gimmick going around as part. Again, they want the hottest storyline and gimmick going around as part of the show, as part of the promotion. That's why they're doing it. So, that's just my opinions on it. Rebby Sky, Rebby Hardy, I don't know if you'll watch this. Matt Hardy, I don't know if you'll watch this. But you guys are in the right in what you're saying. Impact Wrestling, I mean, Rebby, you said it best. They're blocking fans for speaking their minds, speak, siding with you guys. And the way they wrote the Hardys off, it pretty much tells you that they're desperate. They're desperate for something. We just... They're, they're desperate. They're desperate for the gimmick. They're desperate to want ownership of the gimmick. They are desperate for the fact that they want a, they want a percentage. They want the money from the gimmick. That's what they want. They don't want anything else. They want money. And that's all that really matters to them. So... That's what it really is about in the end. It's not about, oh, well, we don't want the Hardys to use it or anything. No. They want the hottest gimmick and storyline going right now. That's what they want. And that's pretty much the truth. That's pretty much the end of it. And they want the money that goes with it. So, that's all I'm going to really say on it. You guys let me know what you think down below. Comment if you like. Like Matt and Revy, I hope you guys watch this. Just giving you guys my opinion. And that's really all I'm going to say on it.